I'm very pleased to be joined by New York City Commissioner Catherine Oliver. Welcome to Citywide. Oh, thank you so much. Great to be here. So, Catherine, the, they say there's no business like show business. <laughs> Is that true, and what does it mean to New York? It means big business for New York, and it's such a great industry, and it's such a privilege for me to represent this industry, film, theater, broadcasting. Um, entertainment in New York is such a, an important industry here. It, it's probably a $5 billion a year industry and employing about 100,000 New Yorkers. So how do, how do we know it's that? It's very important. Um, we've, we did some studies, and uh, actually the Boston Consulting Group did a study a few years ago, and they actually talked to all of the companies that are based here. And when you think of the major entertainment companies, they're all based here, NBC Universal, Time Warner, uh, ABC Disney. Um, you know, there's um, an incredible um, presence here. News Corporation based here now has their headquarters. And now these companies represent such a diversity. And it's not just the news organizations that are here, but of course it's the, the, the feature programs, um, the magazine shows that they have, the publishing industry. Um, so it's a really wide, expanding group of people that are working here in New York. Is it fair to say, you've worked overseas and, and in, in other media capacities, is it fair to say, is, is New York the content capital of the world? I think it's fair to say. I mean, most of the major news organizations are based here. The world wakes up um, every day with the news organizations, you know, their sidewalk studios. That's how we begin our day. Um, most of the wire services around the world have a significant presence here in New York. Major newspapers are here, foreign press um, having a presence in New York. So when you're looking on the news side and then, of course, on the entertainment side, you know, there's no shortage of material. Um, the theater community is also. Um, um, very rich in New York and nobody has Broadway and nobody has the off-Broadway theaters that we have and when I'm out there selling New York to producers I'm always pointing to an incredible eclectic rich talent pool that is here in New York because of the live theater here. So why would a filmmaker make a movie in New York? We've got the best locations in the world. I mean, and if you think about filmmaking began here over 100 years ago, and then, of course, it moved out west for many, many reasons, and then there was a bit of a, the tide turned back to New York in the mid-50s um, on the waterfront. I think it's in 1952 or 53, and then that was followed by Marty, and then, of course, 12 Angry Men. And they were three back-to-back -back movies that went on to win Oscars, and they really put New York back on the map again, and then there started to be an influx of production back to New York, and that really paved the way for Mayor Lindsay to open up the Mayor's Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcasting back in 1966. So what do you do for, for a production company if they want to make a movie in New York? We like to say we help them from script to screen. You know, it's we're economic development for the city, so we're really um, on a mission to lure more production here and to retain the production that's here. Um, so we're talking to the production companies even before they're thinking about bringing a project and educating them about what New York has to offer. Our permits are free. You know, if you want to shoot in New York on a city street, make a movie or a commercial, you can't just do that. You have to get a permit and you have to come to our agency. It's really simple. The permits are free. We also have free police assistance because when you're thinking about making a movie or if you think about law and order shooting on the streets of New York, it's all about pedestrian and traffic flow. And so we have to make sure that safety is paramount and that also traffic keeps moving. So we provide police assistance for that and that's free. And, and you pay quite dearly for that in other parts of the world. Um, we figure that we're saving productions about $19,000 a week with the free police. And of course, the free permits and free locations. Um, and, and so we are trying to make it as easy as possible for the production to find the locations that they want to shoot in. We help them find low-cost office space. We point them in the direction of the various guilds where they can hire their crews that they need. Uh, we work very closely with the private industry, Silver Cup Studios in Queens, Kaufman Astoria in Queens, the new Steiner Studios in Brooklyn. These are facilities that are expanding and in the case of Steiner, that's a brand new facility, the city worked very closely to get these projects opened up and actually invested money. Um, and these are the places where the film and television shows can actually do their work, aside from the amazing locations that we have in the five boroughs. So, so let's, let's talk about a, a, a production. Uh, it's being shot on, on, on the streets. It may be uh, doing the post-production someplace else. Hopefully we want them York. to do the post-production right. in New York. What, in terms of the, the economic activity, Activity, not the numbers so much, but the kinds of things that those organizations 
buy? What, what are they buying in New York? Well, they're buying coffee and they're buying uh, light bulbs and, and hammers and nails and, and lumber at a hardware store. They're buying props. They're buying food. Uh, they're buying flowers. So there are so many ancillary businesses that benefit from film and television. You know, they've got to copy scripts. Um, so they might be going to Kinko. So they might be going to a neighborhood copier. Um, they're dry cleaning. They're buying gas for their cars. We reckon that there are probably about 4,000 ancillary businesses in the city of New York that benefit from film production. And we actually launched a, a vendor discount card program that I wanted to tell you about. What, is, we, what does that involve? Well, it's part of our Made in New York campaign, which we introduced. And Made in New York is a celebration of all of the projects that are really made here. And this is a mark of distinction, a good housekeeping seal, if you will. Um, it was designed by Radical Media, which is a New York-based company. And this card, we hand out these cards to um, all of the productions that come in for their permits and we give it to their cast and crew. And we have on this vendor discount card program on our website, we have a list of vendors. And these are the businesses that the entertainment industry would use, anything from hotels to car rental companies. And they agree to provide a discount on services of at least 10% or more. And when the um, production people bring the card into the establishment, they will be able to take advantage of the discount. So this is a nice way for us to say to the film industry, we're going to introduce you to businesses that you need and offer you a discount. And at the same time, it's a great way to go to these ancillary businesses and say, hey, the film business is booming in New York now. Here's a way that we can help you get into that business, a business that everyone really wants to be in. There's, if you'll forgive the expression, the Hollywood um, uh, version of making a movie in New York, uh, which has a bunch of union guys sitting around feather bedding and, and gold bricking and, and, and just a difficult place to do something. Is that the reality today? Well, there are a lot of perceptions versus the reality. And the reality is is that the crews in New York are the finest in the world. And when I go out to Los Angeles and we talk about how you shoot in New York, um, we always point to the law and order model. And Dick Wolf and his cast and crew have are really a model. They go into multiple locations in one day five or six in one day. And, you know, in Los Angeles, they'll say, how can you do that? You know, and the traffic in New York is so ridiculous. Well, the, the reality is, is they work very closely with our office, and they've got savvy crews. And it's that New York street smart sensibility that just gets it done. And so I think that to the credit of the labor unions here, not only are they highly skilled, but they've really tried to do their part to bring back the business as well. Well, they you had know, a near-death experience. In, there was a know. boycott. There was a boycott. In in the early 90s and it really almost killed the television production business and the labor unions got together and came up with new contracts that would be geared toward television production and they also created the East Coast Council that came up with some low budget agreements for independent films but we constantly have to be working on that because there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of competition out there and you know there's always going to be a, a different territory that's going to offer an interesting incentive or lower costs well the city has, has recently taken a big step on the on the incentive front with a new tax credit program. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? The Made in New York tax incentive program was signed into law in January of 2005 by Mayor Bloomberg, and it was historic. Um, new York never had a tax incentive program. And when I started this job with the new administration in 2002, one of the first things that I had to deal with was the Rudy Giuliani movie being made in Montreal. This was a, if you remember, a Carlton Granada production with James Woods. It was the unauthorized um, biography. And they never even budgeted New York. They budgeted California and Canada, and they were here one day. And I said to them, how could you do this? And there was a lot of pressure on me, the new film commissioner. How could this happen? And it really you know, set the tone. And that's what was happening, is that in Los Angeles, they were not budgeting for New York because of the cost. Um, and they said that it was, um, we, didn't have, we didn't have a tax credit. And unfortunately, our neighbors to the north and other places around the world have very attractive incentive programs. But we, we worked long and hard. And it was a collaborative effort by the state, by the labor unions, 
and by the vendors that are here. A lot of credit has to go to the studios who really spearheaded this. And we got this tax credit And how passed. does it work? It's a 15% refundable tax credit for qualifying productions. You have to be a feature film or an episodic television series. And you have to shoot 75% of your um, production in New York um, and New York City to take advantage of the full credit. And you have to use a qualified soundstage. Um, and that means the Silver Cup or the Steiner or the Kaufman. Um, and the idea of the credit was we didn't need to give an incentive to productions to come and shoot at locations. We need to give a credit to keep them here longer. So that's why they are forced to use a soundstage because it prompts them to stay here for longer periods of time. You know, we had the New York Minute, which was a Warner Brothers film with the Olsen twins, and we were lucky if they were here for a minute. They were actually here four or five days, and they were faking New York up in Toronto. They would get their location shots here and then run up north. So this tax credit has stemmed that. Um, Martin Scorsese shot The Departed here this winter, and this is a film that takes place in Boston, and New York is actually faking Boston in this film. And they did that because they're taking advantage of the credit. And this was a huge budgeted film with Leonardo DiCaprio and a, you know scores of others. Um, the Good Shepherd, Robert De Niro just directed and starred in this film. They shot in New York for 105 days. This was with uh, Angelina Jolie and Matt Damon again. Uh, Matt Damon is becoming uh, like the Nicole Kidman of New York, just doing all of his projects here, which is wonderful. Um, and these are big budgeted films that were going to go to Canada, and they stayed here because of the tax credit and because of all of the services that we've had. Um, we're trying to give the perception and also the, you know, and reinforce that New York is film friendly. We want the business, we need the business, and we want to accommodate the productions because it means New Yorkers are employed and it means that the ancillary businesses are benefiting. And much more than that, it's a great marketing tool for the city because most people around the world know our city because of a movie or a television show. So it really is, you know, it, it, it's very important for us to capitalize on that and to work very closely with these productions so that we can show the world that New York is a great place to live and work and be creative. We're going to talk a little bit more about the, the studios and the production of facilities when Citywide continues right after this. May I have your attention please with the owner of the uh, spare tire, <laughs> slightly hairy, uh, with a little brown mold to the left of the belly button. It's an any. Please report to the press box and retrieve your appendage. Oh, they must have lost this parking further away from the stadium and walking in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're back to the action. Welcome back to Citywide. We're speaking with Catherine Oliver, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcasting. I was told the story that uh, some years ago, before the Steiner Studios were built, but when there was early talk about maybe a studio would uh, would be built out there, that um, someone was making a film at the Brooklyn Navy Yard uh, with uh, Elizabeth Hurley and uh, Hugh Grant, and the Navy Yard officials invited people from the mayor's office, prior administration, over uh, to talk about a studio. And while this filming was was taking place. Uh, the uh, they were told that uh, uh, movie people would never come to Brooklyn to uh, to film. Um, obviously, we've come a long way. The Steiner Studios have now been built. Uh, right. Silver Cup has proposed uh, an expansion. Mm -hmm. um, how are those facilities doing? Are they are they filled up? Uh, is the program working? And and what made the difference? Well, I think yes, they're they're amazing facilities, and uh, I think that uh, the announcement by Silver Cup to expand their facilities, and also Kaufman Astoria is talking about expanding as well. I think is an illustration of of how the business is developing, and also the commitment of these business people to the city and to their communities. Um, Silver Cup and Kaufman have been mainstays in Queens for so many years. Kaufman Astoria started back in the 20s. Um, the Steiner facility at the Brooklyn Navy Yard is a new, it's just opened up in August of 2004, purpose-built soundstage with 100,000 square feet of space with very high ceilings. It's a real LA style kind of gated lot feel. And I think that these facilities and the capacity that we needed um, is what the industry told us they, they needed to bring the projects here. Um, you know, 
I think that, yes, um, we have the amazing locations, external locations, but I think that the demand was that we needed additional soundstage space, and I think that these facilities are supplying that. They're very busy right now, and I think it's a result of the tax credit, but also of the efforts of, you know, our agency and also the individual studios to be very aggressive to promote what they have and to lure the business here. Um, and I also think it's a result of the customer service initiatives that we've put in place. Um, I'm a real firm believer and I learned from the best from Mike Bloomberg. I worked with him in the private sector. Customer service really matters and you know we have a very demanding customer base with film theater and broadcasting. We, wa we want to try to make everybody feel special but we also want to thank them th for their business. They can go to a lot of other places to make these movies, but they're choosing to come to New York, and I think it's really important for us to thank them, to develop the relationships, and also when they leave, to solicit some feedback. And we really want to find out for them what worked, what didn't work. How did they find that facility? How did they find shooting in, in this part of the city? You know, working with the police department, working with our agency, because okay, so, we want to do a better job going forward. So you have another, you have another group of customers also, because you, you work for the public, and and Absolutely. Not every neighborhood is as enthusiastic about filming on the streets as uh, as your office might be. Um, what do you tell to people who are told that they have to move their cars so some uh, technician from New Jersey can park his? Well, I think that you know we're always striking that balance, and we are very mindful of quality of life issues, and we've done a number of things to ensure that. Um, we have created um, a, a document that we give out to the productions when they come in. It's called Keys to the City, and it's really a code of conduct, and it's gentle reminders of what a production is responsible for before, during, and after their shoot. And we're always reminding them that you know you're not on a back lot in California or in Canada. You're on somebody's street or in front of their business and this is a city of eight and a half million people with a lot of cars and so we have to be respectful they have to clean up after themselves they have to be courteous do you, do you police that we do well we have the police officers we have a, a dedicated NYPD unit we have 30 members that are assigned to our office and when we give you your permit to shoot that law and order episode you're getting two police officers for an eight-hour shift they're there to look after traffic and pedestrian flow um, but they're also to make sure that the production are abiding by the rules and regulations. Um, and we also reach out to the community boards um, 48 hours before production is coming into a neighborhood. Uh, the production is responsible for posting the signs, going door to door and telling people what's going on. And I think that education and just the communication is a big, you know, that's a first step in the right direction. Um, we know it's going to be some kind of an imposition for a community for a period of time, but we're reminding people that New Yorkers are employed because this production is here, and the local bin businesses are benefiting. And this means that you know there's more revenue coming into the city. So yes, maybe it is an imposition for a period of time, but it really is benefiting the city. And I think even just having the knowledge of what's going on on your block. Oh, it's a movie shoot. Now I know what it is. You know that kind of helps um, address some of the concerns. But when people are, when they find something or if they find that a production is um, perhaps not doing what they should be doing or if they have a question, they simply dial 311 and they can get to our office and we will address it as best that we can. What neighborhoods are the most popular? Well, I mean, Manhattan is probably the number one location just because of all of the iconic structures and there's so many neighborhoods downtown that are quite popular and very picturesque. Um, but Brooklyn is uh, another desirable location. You know, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Dumbo neighborhood. You know, it's historic. It can be so many different things to so many different people. Um, but every one of the boroughs offers something unique. And, and actually, Staten Island has become a real hot spot in the last year. We've had a lot of production on Staten Island and even with the tax credit because the production in order to get the full 15 percent 10 from the state and then 5 from the city, they have to shoot within the five boroughs. So suddenly Staten Island can be a very suburban or a very rural location. Um, we had this summer several films um, faking middle America on Staten Island um, and that was wonderful because it does look very rustic in some in, in some sections. Richmond Town looks like you know middle America. Well I think there were there were plans to build a, a studio in Staten Island and those seem to have fallen by the well. So, that was the home port on Staten Island and 
and that right. was very early on when I started, but unfortunately there were some legal issues tied to, to that, and uh, I think that project is on hold for the moment. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned Dumbo. I remember when they were filming Scent of a Woman, you could, um, Pacino. you could have a scene with a blind man driving a sports car down a city <laughs> street, and um, uh, no, nobody was around because that was the nature of the neighborhood. It's now completely changed, and one of the things that's changed about it is it, it, it's full of uh, dot-comers uh, that uh, have been through boom and bust but are still very much there. Part of the challenge, I think, for New York is to figure out how to translate its content into the new media, into the Internet. Um, and it, does your office play a role in, in, in sort of the technology changes that are affecting film theater and Well, what's wonderful, and we can't take credit for it, but, um, you know, just this past week, NBC Universal, you know, they took the first episode of Conviction, which is a new show on NBC. It's part of the Law and Order. It's not part of Law and Order, but it's a Dick Wolf production. And they put it on... Um, you could download it onto an iPod and watch the entire episode. Now the show doesn't isn't going to be on the air for a while, um, but um, the show will be. You know the, the show, but the, people can actually watch the program on the iPod. You know before it was actually on the air, and so that was quite. Um, innovative, and I think that a lot of these programs will be doing more and more of that. And, and the production people were saying that they actually had to be very mindful that they were shooting not only for the regular screen but also for that little screen. So you can see that happening. Um, I think that it would be our job to help promote that and to help promote that kind of innovation. Um, we work very closely, um, you know, with a number of companies, with Google and Yahoo, to try to send our message out. Um, you know, the internet is a very very um, clever tool and an effective way for a city agency that doesn't have any money to get our message out. Um, and if you visit our website, which is nyc.gov slash film. One more time slowly. nyc.gov slash film. You can um, subscribe to our monthly electronic newsletter, um, and it's free. And it um, updates you on innovations of our office and initiatives of our agency, but also things that are happening in the world of entertainment. Does and it so tell you where you can go to watch celebrities being filmed on the no, street? No, you know, because we have to, we, we might, we, we have something on our website. It's actually a feature that's called Sets in the City. And it actually lists, when a production is complete, um, all of the locations that were featured on a television show or in a feature film. And we know because we issued all of the permits. So we think that we're a very authentic source. Um, and um, what you can do is you can actually look at that listing and then after you see the film, or before you see the film, you can look out for those locations and then maybe go visit them. So that's our service. But to um, red flag it before the production is coming in can, can lead to lots of complications on the set. And then we have to be mindful that, you know, the production goes smoothly. And that's why we have an Office of uh, Film, Theater, and Broadcasting. My thanks to Commissioner Catherine Oliver, uh, the Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcasting. I'm Ken Fisher. Thank you for joining us.